Welcome to today's Sadokan Saturday. We're now going to move to the third Q, or brown belt. Brown belt's an exciting level. It's, it's within that uh, getting close to black belt excitement realm. And brown belts often, you'll see in most dojos, are the most dangerous in sparring because they're so close to being here, but they're so far away that they're advanced from having been a white belt, and there's that exuberance and athleticism and, and the gung-ho of a brown belt. It's always really exciting to see. Um, before you get to the black belt levels and start finding out, wow, I thought I knew more than this, and now I'm learning the stuff that I thought I knew I didn't know. So, third cue, brown belt. There are additional techniques and level and uh, kata and strikes and other things to learn at this level, which we'll begin next week. But today, I just briefly want to cover the concept of the rank. So we call it third degree brown belt, but it's a blank belt. And then you get second degree and two stripes. And then you get first degree and get three stripes, which is really kind of weird. I have a whole other video earlier um, in my whole series on rank itself. But just to reiterate, most ranks start from a large number, 10th, 6th, whatever your starting beginner level number is, and go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and they are called Q, or levels, 10th Q, 9th Q, so forth. Then you get to black belt, and it starts at 1 again and expands outward. So it's a, an hourglass or an inverted superimposed pyramid, or however you want to, the phallus and the chalice, or however you want to, See that 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 to 1, 1 through 10. There does exist 15th degree black belt, and, and I may have referenced this earlier, but to reiterate the story, 15th degree, like all ranks, is made up. Go back to the history of belts. Jigoro Kano needed to distinguish teachers from students, so they added a black belt so they could, up till then, it was just a cotton, solid, sturdy belt to hold their judo gi together. Um, which, of course, gets, if you watch judo in the Olympics, they get pulled out all the time, but then you tuck it in, you have something to hold it together. But they added the black belt to distinguish between the teacher and the student. Then eventually, through competitions, they needed a beginner competition in advance, like a junior varsity and varsity, so the brown belt was instituted. Then Ed Parker in the United States orders a batch of, of belts, and the brown belts came, but there was a poor dye job, and some looked sort of yellow, some looked sort of orange, and like, oh. And then people from that, they started to use that and say, hey, we can use the yellow and the orange, and other people added other colors, and it became this whole explosion. In Taekwondo, I was required to memorize uh, yellow represents the sun and the rising of the new student, and green is the earth as we begin to be grounded in the martial arts. It's and we're growing the green and so forth, and you had to memorize and, and say all this stuff to your test board. All of those things are superimpositions onto the arbitrary, completely arbitrary invention of the color of the belts. Second key issue is that belts do not cross apply from one style of martial art to another, and often not even within the same style from one dojo to another in the same style. Uh, many of our Sadokan brothers don't do the belts the way I do, or the same way as they're done by Sensei Nicks in Okinawa. The belt applies only to your dojo so that you can look and go, this is basically what I expect him to know, and now I know what to teach him next. It gives you a hierarchy and a taxonomy of, of instruction and learning for the instructor himself in his dojo with his students. Go to another dojo with a black belt, you may not be any better than their green belts. You may be as good as their fifth degree black belts. It doesn't matter. Your belt, your dojo, period, end of discussion. Now we hope within the same style that by the time we get to black belt, we have the same basis um, and foundational information, even though there may have been differences in the instruction on the way up. We at least expect to know a certain basic level of kata, of technique, have a certain basic level of expertise or, or ability in order to be at that black belt level. And we hope that within organizations there is some parity, but parity, not parity, some parity, some even equality of, of level or knowledge that everybody in Sato Khan at black belt should be such and such. But we're not, because each individual instructor in dojo is slightly different and there are going to be things that are different. So, again, belts really apply only within your school, your dojo. 
So the third Q brown belt, now past all that, and that was longer than I wanted it to be, we're gonna move to the striking, the hand movements for, or the punches, the hand strikes for the third Q that I require them to know and be proficient in. We start with the Yongbon Ken, which is also known as a leopard fist, striking with these four knuckles, okay? These four fingers bent. Not like a spear, not like a full fist, halfway between. So this Yongbon Ken is a really interesting strike. It's not super supported and powerful, so it does require some strength, some training and conditioning, and you can even use it on Makiwara. I do it on Iron Palm specifically, but it's not intended to be a power penetrating blow as just like the spear hand. It's more for smaller strikes. So maybe I gotta punch somebody in the neck, but my fist won't fit in but the four knuckles make. Maybe go to punch somebody in the shoulder, but they move their shoulder into, into anterior flexion, they move their, their arm forward, so I have a 90 degree angle here. My fist isn't gonna strike the shoulder and disable them as well, but, <clears throat> but the Yongbon Ken, Yongbon Ken, can, Yongbon K-E-N, C-A-N, Yongbon Ken, can. So we use this strike to target smaller crevices that require some power to strike. So a nukite would fit in, but it's not as powerful in striking the shoulder muscle, especially when it's forward. This muscle will flex or contract as I flex. Flex is the motion, contraction is the muscle. As I contract that muscle forward, a nukite may or may not be powerful enough depending on your skill level. But a yongbon ken, yongbon ken can, Pronunciation. So we strike leopard fist. It's also helpful to learn to open and close this so that I'm opening and closing. So I've struck, I grab and retract, striking Yongbon Ken. So for the throat, here, cross to the shoulder is another one. We can strike a sharp blow to the solar plexus, down and in to the crease of the crotch here. Not necessarily to the groin itself, but to the groin muscle of the leg, which is this crease, okay? So anywhere where there's a crease or a fold, yonbon can, can you be used to strike. We can strike it upward and invert it as well. Now again, I don't want this. This is a weak position. If I allow my hand to hit and it buckles, then my strike is weak. So you really have to have this extension, this open position of the hand and the muscles at the back of the hand strong and firm with your, with your uh, fingers tightly pulled together in order to give any power or strength to this strike. Yongbon Ken. The next one is Kagiski, which is a hook punch. Now again, if I have gloves on and I hit here or if my knuckles make contact with the front of the chin, okay. But if I hit this way and slightly back on my opponent, I'm gonna end up hitting with the four knuckles where I would knock on a door rather than the punch knuckles. So in karate, typically our kagiski is done either with the fist, fist horizontal so that I'm leading with these two knuckles or even all the way over and inverted. And I've kind of covered this in some of the bunkai of other uh, kata that we're going to punch this way so that my two knuckles become the leading surface, okay? Um, just to try that, come over to a wall, for example, or better yet, I'll turn you to Makiwara, and this is a good place to see. So if I'm throwing my hook punch this way with the standard uh, you know, boxing formation, as I hook here with my elbow behind, Unless I turn my fist vertical, I'm very likely to hit right here, which can bend and break the wrist, bust the knuckles. But if I turn vertical here, which we see in uh, my hunch kata, okay, coming across the body this way, or if we're up higher, then you completely turn the fist here so that you can lead with the two knuckles as you make that strike. Okay, Kagi's Gi and 
Yom Bon Ken. As with all of our techniques, we'll start them in place here and then move into stepping motions, side step. A very basic combination in boxing is the one, two, three, where you pivot out. So we'd strike one, two, boom, pivot out. Make sure your fist is in the correct position. From the other side, same thing as I pivot out and strike it. So we begin to move <coughs> through our stances, through our footwork, and add these combinations. Where we see these, Kaguski specifically, I don't believe in our Serokan Kata, there's a Yonbon Ken, but it is a fist formation that exists, and therefore we want to practice and learn how to use it and where and when. Uh, the Kenpo concept of contouring fit the strike to the appropriate target so that it doesn't offset applies to both of these strikes. So we begin our footwork and our movement in kata. We'll see this movement, this movement. Here's our block hooking punch. But this can't reach. The guy's in front of me. I move to the side. I'm blocking his circular punch here. Bang, striking him into the head. Naihanchi, one suit. So we see these strikes in this formation throughout our kata. Those are our strikes, first two strikes for the brown belt. Next week, exciting, jumping kicks. Now because of my torn, not torn, strained medial collateral and the bursitis, I haven't done a lot of jumping for a while. So I will attempt them, but I will probably have a student do it. Uh, my ability to teach the technique at this point surpasses my ability to do the technique, but we'll get it in there anyway with the jumping kicks, so that'll be exciting. Thank you, for, as always, for joining. Hopefully, you will work on these strikes, application, use them in kumite appropriately, and until next week, as always, don't you know, let's keep practicing.